Good news from the graveyard. He's not dead. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Came from Liberty and got Liberty, huh? Yes, sir. Thank you. Great privilege to be here. Thank you, Brother Parks, for praying and let put me here. I'm sure that's what the Lord did because I was kind of discouraged a while back. And maybe the Lord kind of spoke to you because he was he's kind and he's good. And he's a loving father. And you know, God has a personality. People think that God's just some kind of a force, but that put the whole universe there and he just dis he disconnected from everybody. He's not he the thing is the reason why he's dealing with sin, because he, he's a personal God that uh, doesn't like it. Amen. You know? uh, do we have to nod yet or what? Okay, Let, let's pray. Let's have a word of prayer. Yeah. Lord, thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for the good singing, Lord, uh, by the church. And, uh, and uh, thank you for the songs we can sing in the nighttime, Lord, God, to thee, Lord. And thank you that uh, we have real songs that we can sing that you hear. Uh, we're not worthy, Lord, and uh, thank you for the book. We can open up and get uh, things new and things old out of it and get treasures out of your book, Lord, and uh, from you. And uh, and you're so much like your book, Lord. Help us to treat you right and your book right, Lord. And um, help me, Lord. Help me uh, get the rest later on as I go home, Lord, for work, Lord. And uh, thank you for being good. Thank you for giving us the bread of heaven. And um, just help us to love you with our hearts and uh, and have an individual walk with you and... and uh, and uh, we and uh, help the people here to have some good things to to uh, walk close to you, Lord. And uh, we ask this in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Um, the main of the message is going to be uh, one thing needful, and um, I got a bunch of different things to give to you. But uh, one thing I was thinking here is that just in the last year, I've realized that God has emotions, right? Amen. And He wants you to love Him. Let's turn to uh, just start out with that. Let's turn to uh, Mark. Let's go to Mark uh, 12. See, the thing is, a lot of times you're raised in church and think, you know, what can I get out of this? What can I get out of it? What do I have to do? Wait, 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 wait a second. We're do you're doing this stuff because you want to please the Lord. And he has emotions and he has feelings. We're not he He's not here for us. We're here for him, right? Amen. Okay, let's we'll look at Mark 12. And uh, if I don't do that to give a great job, I had some problems this morning. I had some problem. My furnace outside the blower went off and... 6.30 in the morning, it didn't work, and I was out there working on it, so the time I was going to do some of this stuff, prepare more of it, I was outside for about two and a half hours, so I didn't get the time to do what I wanted to do, but that's the way it goes. Because the devil always hinders you, but God wants you to overcome, and he'll give you a better reward, right? Amen. Let's look at Mark 12. Uh, look at verse 29. And Jesus said unto him, the, fir uh, uh, the, first of all, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay, so we don't worship three, three gods, we worship one God. One plus one plus one is three persons. One times one times one is one God, okay? Amen. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Amen. Now, a lot of times Christians have attitude, well, you know, you know, we can't love God and do it. We can't do all this stuff like we're supposed to. So he just, he just thinks it's the right and we just don't worry about it. And we just do the best we can and, uh, you know, what's the big deal? No, the Lord says he wants us to love him. Yes. We don't say, oh, well, you know, it's just the way it is. We don't love him. He, God wants you to love him with all your heart. Okay? You know why? Because he loves you. And, and, and it is right if, uh, if, uh, if Mr. Parks doesn't love Mr. Parks, with all, Mrs. Parks with all of his heart. Is that just, that's just the way it goes? No. no. It's not acceptable, right? Amen. It's not acceptable that we don't love God with all of our heart. Is, is that a right? No, it's not a right. Okay? For my kids and our, you know, you know, it's, especially nowadays with these kids, like with all your heart and with all your soul. That's your feelings, right? Yes. 
You know the problem with TV, and when people watch all these things that are fictional, is that it affects your emotions. It makes you feel and think and be happy and be sad, and you go, ooh, and ah, and this is, oh, wow. Then you read the Bible, you go, oh. Yeah, come on now. That's a problem. Yeah. Amen. See, they, they watch a story, and you go, oh, what's going to happen next? Oh, look at that. Oh, the doggy died. Oh, oh, but look at They're all happy, and, and it affects their emotions, and, and uh, they remember that stuff, right? But then when they read the Bible, like, oh, this is, come on now. This is boring. This is that white bread, like light bread, like, oh, we're tired of this stuff, man. It's like same old thing, right? Come on now. And so what you got to do is you got to keep your heart with all diligence because yeah. what happens is your heart will start loving all that emotional stuff, you know? Yeah. And, and you'll just start despising this, right? Yeah. You know, the thing is, either you delight in the Word of God or it's a reproach to you. Yeah. There's no middle ground. Either you delight in it or, you know what it is, it's going to be a reproach to you because you don't delight in it. Right? Right? And see the, see, the flesh goes, well, I don't want to love God with all my mind and all my soul. That means everything I do around God. Oh, how terrible. Come on now. Well, that's just the flesh. That's just because you're wicked. And I'm wicked, right? 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 Well, you know, oh, I do all this stuff. Well, he's giving you, he's giving you everything, you know. He's giving you all this lovely weather, and he feeds you, and he doesn't make it too cold. And he, and he made it this morning where I worked on the thing outside, the furnace outside. It wasn't, wasn't 50 below zero, and God's, he, he's, he's gracious to you. Amen. We think, oh, well, what's, you know. God has emotions. He wants you to love him because he loves you. Amen. Rebecca, right? Yes. Gabriel, right? Yes. With all your heart, not, not just with... You, you, i got to get a message together against cell phones. Amen. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Amen. It's got to be done. Amen. It's got to be done. You know why? Because their eyes are in the end of the earth looking at a cell phone, right? You're right. Right? They're over in Egypt, and they're over in Vietnam, and they're, yeah. they're looking at the end of the earth, Right? Because they're always looking for something more, something more, something more. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, and getting them, getting their, uh, I don't know, their expectations if they see something new, right, you know? Yeah. Like the Athenians, right? Yeah. right? And where's the Bible sit? It sits over there at church. You know, we leave it on the pew when I go home. I don't need it, right? You're right. You leave your church? You leave your Bible at, at church? Come on. You, know, don't, you leave your cell phone at church? Yeah, you won't do that, would you? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that, would we? Would we? You could always have it at your side. Yeah, and while it radiates you and every, you know, you put, and, yeah. and you can't reproduce down the road, right? Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Well, all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy, all thy mind. So, you know, that means, that means Gabriel, that means you, got, you, you think about things of the Lord, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't want to learn about this or learn about geocentricity or learn about the, how the body's made, how God, we don't want to learn that stuff. I want to learn all this other silly little stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, that means you're not loving them with your mind, right? You're right. Think about him, right? Think about what we did. Learn some stuff in the scriptures. See, this is really good, right? It'll excite your heart. Don't let that stuff on TV excite you. Because it's not real, right? They go, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, and everybody's intentions on the screen. It's all made up. Yep. Good job, right? It's all made up. And, and they're brainwashing in meanwhile. Right. Just like they had a, a movie on, uh, it was uh, some war th thing over in Afghanistan, and a woman was over there, and she had a dog, and they was sniffing bombs out like it. And we're going, Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, her doggy died. Oh, it's all made up. It's a movie. Yeah. And meanwhile, they're brainwashed. You think it's the right to put women in the military. Yeah, there you go. And I'd say it was a bad movie. But what it does, it draws your heart and mind away from God, right? Yeah. Bible says, keep your heart. In other words, don't allow your heart to love this and love that. Go after this stuff because it'll pull you away, right? right. Protect your heart. Says, no, your heart's not going over here. It's not, your heart's not going over here. Your heart isn't reading about this romance and thing and get your heart. No, you don't do that. Pr yeah. Keep your heart, right? And, and it's not just protect. If, he's, if you're a keeper of the sheep, what do you do? Watch over him. You feed him, you protect him, you watch over him, you don't let the wolves in, right? Yeah. So he says, keep your heart, not, not just guide or protect. The King James Bible is always better. What God says is always better than what the world yeah. says. And you should be jealous and mad over it. I don't, I don't like, like when they, they say, uh, let's say, uh, instead of saying all things uh, consist by the Lord, they say all things hold together. Well, no, it's not hold together, it's consist. And I'm going to show you some things on that. Amen. And the thing is, the, Lord, the Lord's way is always better. And when you find out his way is so much better, you don't like the world's ways, right? We, we don't worship Yahweh. Amen. Worship Jehovah. Yes, sir. And, and you know, and, and Jeremiah talks about how the, how the false prophets steal the words out of people's mouth. Mm -hmm. Instead of only begotten son, it's one and only. Well, he's not a one and only. That's a lie. Right. So the NIV and all, any other Bibles have that in it. It's a lie, okay? Amen. I was at half price bookstore, so I talked to some Catholic guys. said, these corrupt Bibles have lies in them. Well, it's just nice for the kids. No, you're just a dummy, that's all. Right. 
I mean, they're, they're nice dummies. They don't know. They're ignorant people, and they're, and, they're, and they're led astray. Oh, you know, this is, look at this is pink. You kids are like because it's pink, so, you know. And it's got simple words in it. And we took hell and God out. They couldn't understand those kind of words, right, you know. And, you know, right? Okay, so love them with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. In other words, uh, you know, if something needs to be done in church, you people who have got strong strength, get in there and use your strength for the Lord, right? Right? Amen. Well, this is such a burden, so hard. Okay, then, remember Deuteronomy where the Lord says, if you didn't rejoice uh, uh, with, uh, because of all the abundance that God gave you, he would destroy Israel. So if you're unthankful for what God's given you, you think that, you know, if your parents give you all this stuff and you go, oh, this is too much of a burden, I've got to take a trash, I've got to wash dishes, I've got to vacuum. Okay, then go move out on your own, okay? Yeah. <laughs> then you'll say, I wish I could move back, right? Yeah. And with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. This ain't the first suggestion if you feel like it, right? <laughs> is it? Now, did, I didn't write this. Your mom and dad didn't write this. The God of heaven wrote this, right? Because you're so mean and hateful and he's just trying to be mean, right? No. He, he says he gave us all his commandments for your good, right? Yeah. And even when you when you're, have a bad attitude and rebellious and just, just aren't unthankful, he's still good to you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you say, oh, well, well, you know, I'm tired of church. Oh, you know, okay, then, then go live out there in a heathen and, and get on drugs like some of these kids do and they have the whole life messed up. You'd be thankful you're in church, right? Okay? And see, remember, the Bible warns you about people with smooth words, not the people that have hard words, like, you know, like uh, my wife might say, well, you know, don't say that kind of stuff, you know. Well, people need to hear that kind of stuff. Okay? You don't smooth down a table with, with tissue paper, right? Amen. You sandpaper, right? Yeah. Okay? And, it make, and that makes it smooth. Okay? So God wants you to love him. You know why? Because he loves you. Yeah. Rebecca, he took all the things that you did wrong, and he became guilty of what you did. And what you've, everything you've done. And people go, oh, well, who cares? Well, you better love him for that. Yeah, amen. And, and you deserve, he deserves for you to give him everything, right? Amen. This Bible should be your personal prized possession. Yes. Not your cell phone. Amen. Now, the problem is the devil's got everybody with a cell phone walk around gathering all the information for him so they can keep track of everybody and use it against you down the road. Yes. Not to help you out. Because that one guy that New York that drove that truck on, on the sidewalk and ran those people over, he had 90 videos of beheadings on his phone and also the Islamic stuff on his phone, and they didn't, they didn't do anything about him. The reason they're recording this stuff is so they can use it against you down the road. Yeah. So if you're a senator or somebody in government, they can say, oh, you did this. Okay, let's look you up. Hmm. Oh, we'll tell everybody you did this and this and this. And they, okay, we'll do what you're saying. So they can blackmail you, right? Yeah. They know what everybody's doing. Amen. And the thing is, you know, they want to be like God because, you know, they even have things that you put on your wrist that, that measure your, your footsteps, right? Yeah. God knows every step you're taking, right? So they keep track of all your steps, right? Yeah. Amen. And they want to keep track of everything you're saying, everything you're doing, right? Just like God, right? Yeah. Wants to be like God. Yeah. Okay. So the Lord loves you and he's, and he's, and he's merciful to you. Um, turn to Psalm 139 real quick here. See, the thing is, you guys get me going and... I run over and um, you may have seen this before, but this is pretty good. See, I enjoy learning things that God's done for us, and you know, and the thing is, um, you know what your shame is that other Christians don't enjoy the things of the Lord and, and don't care about it and don't, aren't interested and don't want to have their mind filled with things of God. And how do you think that affects other people? How do you think it affects me? It discourages me a lot. When, when, when the other kids in the family or other people at church aren't, don't care about things of the Lord and don't uh, want to look up things and have things to share with you, well, who, you know, if nobody has nothing to share with you, then, you, then really you don't have nothing that you, you can't fellowship, right? Right? If everybody came in here and uh, they were all, say, they're all Reds fans, but you never went to a game and you never watched a TV show, you never had any memorabilia, it's like, you're not much of a Reds fan, are you? Come on, man. Well, you're a Lord's fan? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you left your church, you left your Bible at church here. Yeah. You haven't talked to anybody out there at work for like six months ever. Amen, preacher. Uh, did you, have you shared with the other guys about how, how great the Lord's team is and what he's done uh, the last couple months? He's a winner. Oh, no. Huh. You're, 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 a, you're a fan of the Lord, huh? Yeah. You must be a secret fan or something like that, right? Is that the way it is? 
And what happens when you meet the Lord in heaven and you see him eye to eye, face to face? You say, oh, you can go first. I'll, I'll, I'll wait, you know. <laughs> and he's laughing. It's, 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 that's what's going to happen, right? right. You can meet the Lord and he's say, oh, hi. He says, I, well, you hadn't talked to me in a long time. Yeah. Let me show you something here. Um, go to Psalm 139. It talks about how, uh, verse 14, Psalm 139, 14 says, I praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderful. Like, you know, like wonderful is like you wonder, like, wow. Wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. 15, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. They said I could refer to Adam and so forth. It says, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book, all my members were written. So it's like your DNA is written in a code, in a book. All, all the information together. Which in continuous, it's like that DNA, it's like a, it's like a, a small cord twisted together. Yeah. Which in continuous were fashioned when, as there were, and yet there was none of them. In other words, you weren't made yet, but all your information about you was, was in the DNA. And it was a small cord, like in John 2, how he talks about uh, this temple was made in 46 years. And he talks about the body and temple he knows was in man. And it was a small cord in Numbers 46. That's the number of the, uh, the, uh, the, the DNA. You got, you got uh, 23 sets of two, which makes 46. And the temple, and it's being built, in, and that's what's in man. And that's in John chapter 2. Amen. And small cord. And, and all those things about you are written in that. So the information like, is like a, and it's, and it's four different, four different uh, amino acids in there in different uh, orders, and, and that's what makes up who you are. Okay? And let me show you, this is, a bio, this is the biochemistry of the human body. I'll pass these things around. Make sure I get them back. So this is the original copies, okay? These are the original manuscripts. So I couldn't reproduce these again. What this is is you can buy a wall chart of this. It's like 52 inches by 48 inches. And this is A to K and 1 to 10. And here's another part right here. These are all the chemical pathways that are inside a human cell. And, uh, you know, the evolution say the human cell is simple and it's a simple cell and it's more developed, whatever. Well, you, you can look at some of these things and, and uh, you can go online and look this up. This is a little piece of that map right here. This little six pieces right there. This is a little piece of right here. And this is showing you, pass that around, look at that. This is, this is all the chemical reactions that are done inside the body accidentally through millions of years of evolution, okay? Right? You believe that, they need to put you away somewhere, right? Okay? And this is all, this is all pieces of it right there, you know? And this all happened by accident. And look how much God loved you. He, he, he did all this stuff, and it all works out all by itself. And this all came about just by accidental soup and electrical volt hit this thing, and it kind of just appeared, you know, you believe that? It's almost like, you know, the, you, your, uh, your quad processor and your computer just happened by accident, right, you know? Yeah. And it says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. You look at that, it's like, it might blow your mind, right? This is the, this is the bio pathways in a human cell. In one cell. It's like... And there's, what, a trillion in your body? Yeah, it's like... It's like it, 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 you know, there ain't no, there ain't no way this is, your body, this is accidental. There ain't no way. This is like, this is like beyond incredible, right? It's like your computer came with, with Windows 10 programmed out all of a sudden, all by itself. Just dropped out of the sky and there it was. This is, this is the way it is. It took millions of years, but it happened like that, you know, because it came from Windows 95, 98, Windows in there. It was, right? See, it evolved like that. These people are mentally ill. Wow. It's like it's crazy. Okay? And go to Colossians. Colossians uh, 117. You look at this like, this is like, wow. This is like off the chart. The, the, they can't deal with this kind of information. Does that mean they got to have accountability to somebody else? That's right. You know? Colossians 117. And, you know, the Lord loves you, and the Lord designed this thing. And uh, Colossians 1, 7, uh, 1, 17 says, He is before all things, and by him all things, what? Consist. Consist. And, you know, there's something called a laminin. 
Uh, Rebecca told me about it a while back. And uh, somebody gave me Ecclesiastes 4.12. Ecclesiastes 4.12. But Cliff, give me that. Ecclesiastes 4.12. And this thing here, it's a, uh, I'll read you the definition of a laminate. Let me see, I have it up here. Oh. This is a protein, it says, a laminate is a protein found in the human body, which is used to connect cells together. It has been described as the glue of the human body. Wow. Uh, basically, it's a protein found in the extracellular matrix, the sheets of protein that form the, subst the substrate of all internal organs, also called the basement membrane. This thing keeps everything together. And by holding it together, it, everything consists, okay? And uh, read Cle Ecclesiastes. Okay, and you want to see a picture of the thing that holds all the cells together, and uh, Lord Jesus Christ gets preeminence? This is what it looks like right here. Wow. And it's a threefold cord. Isn't that amazing? This holds all the cells together. Wow. So all things consist, right? By him, right? And that's in your body. But that's evolution. You've got to believe that, right? It was come from an alien, alien uh, 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 planet that came down. They seeded the earth, and that's how we came about, right? You know. Wow. Isn't that pretty good. Wow. Now that's common on the internet, but like you know, some people made. I'd never seen it before. I, before I saw it the first time, and you think, well, it consists. Let me give you a verse on consists. Look at Luke twelve fifteen. Now you, anybody can do this. All you have to do is look it up and find these different things, and God will show you these things. Look at this. If you want to find out what your life consists of. Look at Luke 12, 15. Luke 12, 15. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. You know, we got to go to the mall and buy more things, right? Yeah. And get the latest cell phone, right? Uh, For a man's life consists not in the, what, abundance of things which pos he possesseth. So, so what does your life consist of? Colossians 1, 17 says Christ, right? right. So it does, doesn't, your life doesn't consist of abundance of things. It consists of what? the Lord, right? And he's the one that all things consist by, right? Wow. Good preaching. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Yeah. And you see, you know how you learn the Bible? By the interconnections, how it's all connected together. Right. It's all, it's all the cross references which increase your faith, right? Amen. See, if you never check the cross, you say, well, that's just the verse, okay? But when you see how it connects with ten other verses, you go, wow. See, that, that, that increases your faith and, 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 and makes the Bible pretty special, right? Yes. Isn't that pretty good? I thought that was good. I like that. Yeah. So your life doesn't consist of the abundance of things which you have. It consists of what? Him. Him. And the thing is, if you're in a small church, you go, well, I don't have any friends to fellowship with. Well, you're worried about yourself, right? Why don't you fellowship with him and don't worry about your friends. Just, just worry about your walk with God. And then if, you, if you're saying, well, I, sh I want to go somewhere else so I can fellowship with him, you're being selfish, you're worried about yourself. How about your relationship with God? Yeah. And your relationship with God's right, you're putting him first instead of yourself self first, right? And the thing is, if you say, well, the church is small and I only have a place to nobody fellowship, well, how, how is any, any church going to grow then? Because yeah. we all have to go someplace where there's other people. Well, how, how can you have a small church grow? Yeah. How, how do you do that? Because you've got to start from somewhere, right? Yeah. And the Bible says, despise not the day of small things, right? What book's that in? Zechariah. Zechariah, yes, right. And I heard a man preach, uh, Brian Don was preaching about that. He was saying Zerubbabel's temple, you know, that they built, and when they, when they got the foundation built and so forth, they said, oh, this ain't great as Solomon's temple. This is just, you know, this ain't great. Oh, they're all, you know, complaining about whatever. Well, one, one thing is interesting is that that was the same temple that was there when Jesus walked on earth, right? And that was the same temple that Jesus walked into and drove out the money changers. So a greater than Solomon was in that temple, even though Solomon's temple was greater, a greater than Solomon would walk in that temple. Amen. That's why I said, uh, don't despise the day of small things, right? Amen. So the temple that they built, well, that wasn't so great. God himself walked in. Yeah. So, wow. That's great. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. I said, that's pretty good. And, and you, know, you know why we know the wailing wall isn't, isn't part of the temple? Because God had the first temple, right? was destroyed, right? And then the second temple was there. Okay, you got the father and you got the son, right? Now, have you seen, is the son's body around anywhere around here? It's gone, right? Not, not around, right? So, uh, you know what the sample t second temple is? It's gone.
because according to Acts 21 and other places, they said uh, uh, Antonio's fortress was on top of the hill, and it was like 36 acres. And they had like 10,000 people and soldiers and so forth in this big, temp in this big fort. And then, uh, de and then uh, the temple was down the hill about 600 yards in the city of David. W w where the spring of Gihon was because the priests needed the water for, their for all the sacrifices and all the cleansing. And uh, they weren't going to go down to the spring and then walk 600 yards through the dirt and get all dirty. You're right. If you can check it out, find us out. And also it says that, remember when Jesus said, Matthew says, one stone upon another wouldn't be left on the temple, right? Well, then how can they go and have this big wall here and it's like there? It's like, huh? it was supposed to be taken apart, right? It was. And nobody ever criticized the fact that Jesus made a mistake because he didn't, right? Amen. So, so later on when the Jews came back, to Israel, whatever, they looked around and they couldn't find nothing, but some guy said, well, this wall must be it, so let's just do it here, whatever, you know. It's not true. And the thing is, remember, Jesus is, uh, uh, God the Father dwells in Jesus, right? So in his temple, God, God dwelt. And, uh, and uh, Jesus is the second part of the Godhead, right? And his body's gone, right? His temple's gone, right? Mm -hmm. So you think that the second temple's going to be around? No. What they say now, is, uh, I think it's over in uh, one of the minor prophets talked about how, how it'll be like a mown field. It'll just be like a big grassy field, and there'll be nothing there. That's the way it is now. There's nothing there. It's gone. So they have no idea where it's at, but it's down in the city of David, below, below uh, um, uh, Antonio's fortress. And Acts 21 talks about how Paul, the guys were in the fortress, and they came down from there and talked to Paul, and they came down the, down the road, and that's where Paul was, and think Acts 21. So they came down from the fort to the temple. So if the temple was on top, they couldn't have come down to the thing. So Antonio's fort's on top here, and the temple was down here, and it was smaller. The Romans weren't going to let the, 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 uh, the Jews have this big thing, and they had a little, no, no. Because their normal forts were like 36 acres. They were gigantic. They were like a small city. And they were separated from the Jews, so all the Romans and people lived in that big city. And the temple was down below. And there's, no, and there's nothing there now, so the Jews are free to build a temple there. So that right there gets, you know, Jews say, well, we, we follow tradition. We don't want to cause us trouble. We just follow what we're told like that, you know. And we're barren at this wall, you know. No. And see, the Bible tells you what's going on, see? Amen. See, but the Jews are all blinded like that stuff, you know, okay? So I thought that was pretty good. On You can keep that, you can keep that one copy. I got a, another copy here, brother, okay? Okay. I'll be like Moses. I made another copy when I came out of the mountain, you know? Okay. Because the first one was broke, right? Okay. Let me give you something here. So, see, isn't, isn't this good? Isn't this better watching some going, going over somebody's house, sitting down and watching the movie? Oh, look at him. It's over. Now what are we going to do? It's boring. You know, you see, see, you see Ant-Man, Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, whatever man, you know. <laughs> that, th those things are all just copies of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's yeah. what it is, you know. And we're coming back with him, right? Yeah. And not going to be able to hurt us when we come back, right? We're not going to have to fly by some kind of spider web. We're going to go by the power of the Lord, right, you know. Let me give you something out of, uh, this is something pretty good. Here's some Christian pleasures. And maybe one of these will help you. In Psalm 1611, it talks about on his right, side, right hand is pleasures evermore, okay? Some of the pleasures are also, first of all, we have a, a life that cannot be four-footed, right? You can't lose it. Some of the charismatics think you can, but they can't. But they, they, thought they, they think everybody else can, but they can't, right? It says, a relationship that can never be abolished. Your relationship with God can never be changed. Amen. A righteousness that can never be tarnished. Your righteousness with Christ, your personal righteousness, okay? And... Uh, and then, remember, your, uh, your standing is always good, but your state can change, right? Yeah. A standing that can never be disputed. An acceptance that never can be questioned, right? A justification that can never be reversed. It says a seal that never can be broken. Amen. An inheritance that can never be stolen. Now, you can lose it, if, and you can, you can live wrong and, and lose it, but nobody can steal it, right? A wealth that never be depleted. A possession never can be measured. Just like it uh, makes you think about the, in, the temple, in the temple area where they came and they washed it, that big uh, thing where they, where they washed their hands or whatever. They said there was, there's no measurement because there's water there and, and that's where you get cleaned up. There's no, it doesn't matter how dirty you are, there's enough water to take care of, right? Yeah. Um, a forgiveness never resented. A grace never exhausted. A strength never weakened. An assurance never disappointed. So if you, if you put all your trust and hope in the Lord, you're never going to be disappointed. Yeah. The devil's going to lie and say, you're a fool and this and that. Well, he's the biggest fool, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the thing is, temporarily it might look, it's not work, look like it's not going to work out, but just wait long enough. It'll work out good. And that's the truth. That's just not preacher talk, okay? 
It says, an attraction never su suspended. It says, a comfort never lessened, a service never unrewarded. An intercession, an intercession who never can be disqualified or denied. Hope that can never, can never fade away, a glory that will outshine the stars forever. So remember, if you lead people to the Lord and, uh, and you, you live for the Lord, you're going to shine like the stars forever, right? Hey. In the book of Daniel, right? Um, also, I had um, a fellowship without compare, a citizenship that you can't lose, a life that will never end, a book that will never be without awe and sweetness, a banner of you is in love, okay? A wonder that can never be uh, diminished, a body never corrupted, a life as sure as the Lord's. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to, um, let me give you one more thing. I heard some other guy gave something. This is, you know, we talked about Joseph in the Old Testament, how he had a coat of many colors, right? Yeah. The Bible tells you how, what his colors are. <laughs> what the colors are. Amen. There's three colors there. Let's, let's go here. Let me see. Let's go to, uh, okay, let me see. Where am I looking at? Let me see. Uh, Lord, let me see. I'm not going to miss this up here. Um, okay, here. Here's right here. I have my little tab. It came off. Uh, Genesis 37 talks about Joseph had a coat of many colors. Okay. And, you know, Who's Joseph a type of in the Bible? Jesus yeah, he, 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 he's the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ in, in the Bible. That's why I named my first son Joseph. His, not, his name isn't Joe. His name is Joseph. Amen. Okay. Uh, and uh, and uh, Genesis 37, that's where it talks about his robe. Let me turn there and see. And Joseph really loved his brothers, right? He forgave them, didn't hold anything against them, right? That's the way the Lord is with us, right? Look at, look at um, uh, Genesis 37. Uh, 37 is a prime number too, you know. There's no numbers multiplied together that can make 37. But 37 times 3 is what? 1, 1, 1. Okay, so that's the answer. So you got, you got 1, 1, 1, uh, and then, which is a prime number of 3, 3 times 37. Uh, look at verse 23. It says, It came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren uh, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors, that was on him. Okay, now a coat is like a vesture or whatever, like a robe, right? Okay, let's see if Joseph was type of Jesus. Let's find what kind of robe Jesus had, right? We'll find out what colors his robes were. Let's go to Matthew 27, 28. It's just a King James Bible, right? Yeah. Now, these other Bibles don't do that. Okay. Well, I never heard this before. <laughs> well, then listen, then, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, look at 27, 28. And they stripped him, like they stripped Joseph, right? It says stripped him. Same words match, right? Yep. And put on him a scarlet robe. 27, 28. Okay, first of all, it's a scarlet robe, right? And what's scarlet connected with? Sin. Okay. Blood. Yeah. And uh, a priest is, priest is connected with the blood, right? Stuff, whatever, you know? It says, look at Mark 15, 17. Or like, you know, like a king wears a royal robe, right, you know? 15, 17. Mark 15, 17. And they clothed him with a, clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. So we got purple here. Let's go to, um, so we had scarlet and purple. Let's look at Luke 23, 11. Luke 23, 11. See, this is loving the Lord with all your mind, you know, see? You're looking it up, right? And you say, this is pretty neat. 23, 11. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him with a gorgeous robe and set him again to Pilate. What well, just says gorgeous here? Hmm. I wonder if we looked up gorgeous somewhere else, we, we'd get the color, okay? Let's go to Ezekiel 23. Ezekiel 23. And see, I bet you the Lord thought it was gorgeous, right? Yeah. The Lord thought his, what his son was doing was gorgeous, right? 
And you don't think Joseph's dad, the robe he put on him, thought he was gorgeous, right? He, he didn't give him a robe that would be ugly. He gave him a pretty robe, right? Amen. Okay, at Ezekiel 23. Look at, uh, look at verse 6. Ezekiel 23, 6. That's why every word in the Bible is essential. You start changing these words, you're changing the DNA of the, of the book, right? You can't do that. Okay? And they're, 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 this is what I say is, there's no non-essential words in the Bible. Okay? Look at verse 6. Which were clothed with blue, which were clothed with blue, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen, riding upon horses. Okay, let's look at verse 12 here. She doted upon the Syrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed with most glorious horsemen, riding upon horses, all of them uh, desirable young men. Now, what color was it, according to verse 6? Blue. So we know that the garment was scarlet, purple, and blue, and it was, and it was gorgeous. Now, see, if, uh, if that was your, if, you know, the Lord's your Savior, and you see him had that robe on, wouldn't you think it's gorgeous? Wouldn't you love it, right? So we got three things there with her, right? Okay. And um, also, Joseph's robe was not rent or ripped. Okay. Just like, just like Jesus wears the, uh, you know, his robe, it wasn't, it wasn't ripped, whatever, you know, whatever. Okay. And so that's just, that's an interesting little note right there. You can look, at, uh, enjoy that. Okay. Let's go to, um, let's go to, Luke 10. Now, one thing is needful. Luke 10. Now that's, that's a pretty good little phrase, needful. Like if, if one thing is needful, what's needful? The Lord's going to tell you what's needful, okay? Let's go to Luke 10. I mean, Luke 10. Let's look at verse 38 through 42, okay? Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So it was her house, right? And uh, uh, that was, uh, Lazarus was her brother, whatever. And uh, this was a close family with Jesus. And uh, she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So also, so Martha must have done that too. Okay? So Mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And Martha was cumbered with much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? It's like, you know, Lord, you're charged. What, what am I doing all this? Why, why aren't you telling her to get up and help me? What, this is not right, you know? He says, all this stuff's got to be done. We've got to uh, fix the curtains and put the pillows right. We've got to get the food out. We've got to vacuum make everything look pretty because you're coming over. He says, just quit it, guys. Don't worry about it. Just sit down and listen to what I have to say, you know? She's saying, well, he, she didn't help me. This isn't right, you know? Isn't that right? Yep. She's all stressed out, right? And the Lord said, don't worry about it, stuff. Don't worry about it. I'm here, right? That's what's important, right? Amen. If the Lord's come over your house, you're like, this would be the highlight of your entire life, right? Yeah. Just sit down and hear what he has to say. Don't worry about yeah. doing everything. Just, just get with him, right? Every, every minute, you know, he's only here for an hour, so you better listen, you know? Amen. Right? Don't pick up your phone and, and see if somebody texts you 15 times while he's, right? Because <laughs> what he says is a little more important than that, right? Yeah. Uh, verse 40, bid her, therefore, she helped me. And Jesus said unto her, Martha, Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. She was all stressed out, right? But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Because what was Mary doing? Mary was going to sit at his feet and hear his word, right? But what was Martha? Martha wanted to get it all service, get it all fixed up like that. She says, just, just, just relax. Like my wife was like, just relax, cool, take a deep breath, right? <laughs> right, Rebecca? Um, Mary had evil thoughts, uh, Martha had evil thoughts against her sister. She was walking after the flesh, she was selfish, she was thinking of herself, right? Amen, bro. Right? Uh, Mary is the learner. She anoints his feet. She sat at his feet in, in John 12, verse 39. She falls at his feet in 1132. Uh, she knows her place. Martha's a worker is good, but fellowship with Jesus more, uh, is more important than uh, all of her service. 
And there you get eternal blessings and spiritual growth. Amen. Laboring to please the Lord it is not the, is, uh, laboring to please the Lord, this is not the time for that, okay? Now is the time to sit and listen. Um, and Mary brought forth good fruit because she abided with the Lord, right? You know what right? She's like Psalm chapter 1. Um, and, what she, and what she's a gift of the Lord will not be taken away from her. She'll keep it in her heart for the rest of her life, right? Like the Lord's going to give her some, just some real good things just for her. And, you know, for Martha, and she wants Martha to just sit down and just relax, right? Amen. Amen? Okay. And, uh, and let's look up the word. I noticed over here where it says, uh, Mary was cumbered about much serving. What's cumbered connected with? Hmm. Let's look at, let's look at cumbered and see what it's connected with. Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy 1. Verse 12. See, you wouldn't give this going to the Greek or the Hebrew, or whatever, right? Or Spiros Zodiades, you know, he'd put a black light on your Bible, or whatever, you know. Uh, Deuteronomy 1 12. It doesn't help. It doesn't help do. Let's do a word study in the Greek and find out what all. Not, that doesn't, that, you're, you're going into something dead, right? You want to stay in something alive like this book, right? Amen. Deuteronomy 1 12. How then can myself alone bear your cumbrances and your burdens and your strife? So what's cumbers connected with? Burdens. Yeah, burdens and strife, right? Yeah. So she was connected with burdens and strife, right? Okay. Also, let's look at uh, Luke 13, verses 7 to 9. Luke 13, 7 to 9. Do you see how there's all kind of treasures and stuff in here? There's all kind of treasures and hidden things in here, right? And you don't have to be very smart. You just have to be humble and, 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 and let your fingers do walking through the Bible, right? Amen. And turn the TV off. Luke, th Luke 13, 7 to 9. Then said he unto the dresser of, the, of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I, can see, I, I came seeking fruit. So did Martha have good fruit? On this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? So it wasn't, it wasn't producing what God wanted to produce, right? Mm -hmm. So cut down. Okay. And he said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I dung it about, uh, dig and dung it, uh, dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. So God wanted to bring fruit, didn't bring fruit forth here. So the Lord's going to be patient and maybe they'll work on it and put some fertilizer around it and see if it, it'll, it'll bring some fruit. And you know what that fertilizer is? Die to yourself is what it is, right? Die to yourself and serve the Lord, and then you bring forth some fruit, right? Like you got to take a seed, you got to take that seed, you got to put it in the ground and let it get warm and water it, and that shell on the outside breaks open, and then the water allows it to come forth and, and bring forth fruit, right? But it's got to be broken and it's got to be buried, right? Like the Lord, right? See? Well, I don't want to be buried. And well, that's, that's the problem, right? <laughs> Your flesh don't want to be buried and broken, right? But when God breaks you, that's why you have to obey him even if you don't want to. When he breaks you and buries you, then you bring forth fruit. And then it's worth something, right? He's not rewarding you because it's easy and it's fun. Right. Yeah. Like when people run the Olympics, they're not getting the, the gold medal because, because uh, uh, it was fun and it was easy. You know, because they put a lot of effort into it. That's why they're getting rewarded, right? And that's just temporary for a little while on the Olympics for like maybe a, a, a week or two. And everybody forgets who it was and, you know, it doesn't matter. But God's giving you eternal rewards that will be forever. Not just a month or two, you know. Forever. Let that sink in. That's why the devil's fighting against me and you, and, right? If you get somebody saved, that, that's an eternal thing. I personally will live forever. Yeah. Well, we can't relate. I, you know, it's got to get in our thick head, right? So uh, let's go back to Luke. So we found out that cumbrance is connected with what? Burdens and strife and no fruit, right? That was Martha, right? Yeah. But see, Mary fell down at the Lord's feet, worshipped her, her, him, and knew her place, and was patient, and didn't run her mouth, you know, about what needs to be done, right? Amen? Okay, and she wasn't, she wasn't you know, wondering why the Lord wasn't doing his part, and what, what's, you know, he was, you know, didn't know, what, he didn't know what was going on. He knew exactly what was going on, right? Okay. Um... So, so you see that word, like whenever you come across those words, like, what's that word? Well, go look it up. Go look through the scriptures and see what God has to say about that, right? 
I put down some notes here. It says, Mary was careful, full of care about, do, uh, about doing things. Troubled. She had no peace. She was upset that she had to do it all. Nobody was helping her. And why didn't you get, tell her, her to do it and whatever, right? And uh, because she thought Mary should have been helping her and that this situation is not fair, right? She was cumbered. She bore no fruit. She was stressed. She was burdened. And an encumbrance is connected with somebody who is in debt with land. She also was thinking of Je uh, evil of Jesus. Uh, does not I care that my sister has left me to serve alone? See that? She said, don't you, he said, don't you care? So he's, she's judging his heart. Is that very nice? She had a bad attitude, right? And the reason why we need to sit at his feet and hear his word is a couple reasons. Because of the warfare out there, you know, the, the battle and the fight, we need the Lord's to feed us and give us what we need for some textures, some verses we can use against the devil, right? Also for the work of God to get people saved and encourage saints and, and get sinners saved, right? Yeah. And let me, name, name, let me say something about that. One of the reasons why some of the kids, like, they're homeschooled or they're in church all the time and don't have uh, Christian friends and don't talk to any lost people, that's not good. You learn all this stuff, how to be a, a good Christian and how to deal with the sword and do all these verses. Well, what are you doing with them? When do you ever use the stuff? Yeah. Well, we don't. We just go to work, come home, and you'll talk. Was that good? No. That's like, that's like uh, I'm going to be a tennis instructor. I'm sure you had to do it, but you never practice. You never go out and do anything with it. Yeah. You just sit here and you soak it in and you shower, and you go, oh, I don't like this. Well, you got, if you did something with it, you would, you'd enjoy the battle. Amen. And that's real. But the thing is, well, nowadays, you go down the street, like, you ever see anybody outside? Go down the road, like, nobody, everybody's inside. So, who, who, you know, it's hard to talk to people. Yeah. So if I go to Half Price Bookstore, I talk to some Catholic guy, and these guys master in theology, and I start <laughs> pulling his sword out and being, being kind and kind of tickling him with it, whatever, you know. <laughs> well, you got to do that. Yeah. Because then when he says this, do you have a response to what he says? Oh. I do. Yeah. I like that. So this is good. <laughs> the guy's going, whoa, whoa, you know. You got to do that. If you don't say, well, I'll just stay home, you know. Well, you're not doing nothing with it. Amen. And that's what, if you don't do nothing with what you're, what you're hearing, it's never going to, you're never going to get a, you, you're not going to grow, you know. If you just sit down all the time, you never get into action, do anything with it, you're not going to grow. It's not good for you. Yeah. You, need to be, you need to get like a secret mission. Go down to the mall with one of your friends, uh, uh, Gable and Rebecca. Go to the mall and see who people you can talk to over there with a couple of tracks and watch out for the security guards and go see who you can witness to. See what happens. That'd be, and come back and tell me, okay. Yeah. At, 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 at 1,200, you tell me, and I'll give you two hours. You come back to the mission, and I'll see if you come back and see what, tell me what happened, okay. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. But be, be wise. See, watch out for the enemy. Don't, don't get thrown out of the mall. But go see who you can talk to. Yeah. What do they do? Say, I don't want to talk to you. Okay, good. Go to the next person. Skip about 20 feet and go somewhere else so they don't see you. So you don't start over again. And give, give somebody a little track. Maybe that didn't, that maybe if, you, if you're afraid they're going to track you down to your church, to have one without the church name on the back. Just give tra track to somebody, whatever, you know. Amen. Be kind of exciting. Yeah. Right? You come back and say, this is pretty fun, you know. If you're a big, brave guy, do that, right? Amen. Or go up down the street and, and put some, put some uh, uh, tracks on, on, on the uh, windshield of the cars, you know, go down like that. Or if the window's open, stick one in there, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Is that hard? That's not hard, is it? Yeah. Well, I, I might miss my program. <laughs> That's a problem, right, say, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then you, you might talk to somebody about the Lord. Some kid maybe is raised in a family with a bunch of druggies and he needs some help and the Lord may just send you by to talk to that kid. Yep. We couldn't do that. Why couldn't you do that? Right. Yeah. Didn't the Lord tell you to do? He told you to go, right? Yeah. So go. Okay? For the work and also for the, uh, the warning of God. Getting that books that God will warn you about, you better watch, what you better watch out for, right? What you better stay away from. Okay? And also the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil work in your mind. Rebecca, it'll work in your mind, Gabriel. It'll work in your mind. And he'll tell you little lies about whatever. And you get all these kind of bad attitudes. But when you get in that book, your attitudes will be straightened out. God tells you to give thanks for all things and in all things. I mean, in all things? And then not just things you like, things you don't like. And in all things and for all things. That's pretty high ground. Amen. That's real high ground. Like if I go to work tonight and I'm only going to have four hours sleep, I need to give thanks for that. 
Well, it's going to be hard in my flesh. Well, it says give thanks. Amen. Not that God every day is like this, you know. <laughs> That's what Martin Luther said, you know. <laughs> give thanks for everything. Give thanks you lost your glasses, right, you know. Yep. Also, uh, for the wishes of the Father, God wants you in that book, young people, so you can learn how much God loves you, and then you can live for him, and then he can bless you. Yeah. Because he's so mean and hateful, he wants to bless you. Yeah. He, he, he wants you to find out how good he is, and so you and him can have a close relationship that nobody else can see, and nobody else can interfere on, and you and him can walk in fellowship, and it'll be better than anything in the world, and that's what he wants to give to you. Amen. What do you want that for? Go shopping at the mall and go in debt. Buy something that, 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 you entrust, that you can buy to impress somebody else that don't care what you buy, you know? Right, yeah. You know, I realized when I was a young kid, I had a, you know, had a uh, kind of a nice, uh, oh, nice car, but it was just like a, a classic car years ago when I drove, and I said, you know what I don't like about this when I drive this car? I can't see myself driving the car because I'm inside the car. I can't say, isn't that cool, you know? Because you're inside, you can't look out, you can't see, right? So you can see other people, oh, look at that. Well, I can't see myself driving because I'm inside, you know? And people outside don't care what you drive because they're driving what they drive. So what's the matter, right? Yeah, amen. <laughs> they don't say, well, you have a cool car because they're in their car thinking they're cool, right? That's right. So it's all vain. You're right. Right? Yep. And if you're in a cool car, you can't see how cool it is because you're inside, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? You, you, you want the third person, you say, isn't that cool, right? You know? <laughs> isn't that right? Yeah. It's all vain, right? Just be thankful what God gives you and if you can get back and forth, that's what matters, right? Um, the wishes of the Father, and when you realize that uh, what God really did for you, and the thing is, God's like a, a person, all-powerful, that can do everything, that knows everything, that can do anything for you, and just wants you to enjoy everything he's done for you. Well, that's too silly. That's not real. Well, yeah, it is real. And I just realized that the last couple of years, you know. God isn't here, isn't mean, and he isn't in a bad mood like Dad sometimes, you know, or a lot of times, you know, whatever, right? And that's because sometimes if you went through some things I went through, you might be in a bad mood too, you know. Amen? You know? Amen? But, you know, there's no excuse, okay? And also, for wisdom and understanding. Real quick, let's go to um, Proverbs 3. Proverbs is great. I listened to Job uh, a couple times this week. I listened to Psalms. Psalms took about two and a half hours. Let's do all the way through. Let's do it. MP3 is like, it's long. That's good, you know? Amen, and the thing is, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, young people, older folks, if you, if you put your Bible, put your nose in this Bible for a, for a a good period of time for a couple days, you will never regret it. Amen, man. You won't regret it. Right. You won't regret it. You won't say, that's a big waste of time. No. Watching all those movies is a big waste of time. Right, well, it does. It, 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 it entertains you and detains you and distracts you for a period of time so you can't be doing what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. It's like I'm going to come up here with these little kids thing. I'm going to have a little thing of bubble stuff. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to take blow bubbles and have you run around and catch them for half an hour. Is that productive? No. You go, I almost got it. It's gone. It's like, I almost had it. Well, look at this one. It's really big. It's, like, it's gone now. That one's gone too. I almost had that one. Well, let's try it again, you know? Right, Rebecca? Well, I got to go see the new Batman movie. Well, it's just like the Superman movie. They just change names and change people. Just, what's the difference? And then the people who make those movies, you find out the people who own the companies are a bunch of wicked perverts. Yep. Right. They've been per perverts for all those years, and everybody says, we like him, he's our buddy, until they expose news. Oh, we don't like him anymore, you know. <laughs> one of the reasons why they exposed that one, uh, what the guy's name was, was because he wasn't going along with New World Order and what they want him to do. So they exposed him and say, anybody who else who's in this little group that doing what he says, we'll destroy him like we'll destroy him. Yep. We'll destroy you like we'll destroy him. Yep. They knew all about what these people are doing. Just long, and when you don't cooperate with us, th th they put you out there and they'll, they'll make sure you can destroy it because so you'll fear them and do what they say. That's right. what's going on. So, you know, being on the Lord's side, the Lord protects us. We have a simple, good life. Those people who live wickedly, they're going to, they're all going to hell, whatever, you know. Let's look at, uh, actually, it's Proverbs 2. Can I see the verse where it says... Uh, yeah, look at Proverbs 2, look at verse, uh, yeah, let's start at verse 1. My son, if thou will receive my words, see, the words, receive his words, and hide my commandments with thee. Hide them in your heart, right? So you don't sin against God. So that thou shalt incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply the heart unto understanding. So you got to get your heart involved there. 
So you have wisdom and understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, in other words, you really desire it, and you cry out to God for, for knowledge, and lift up thy voice for understanding, you cry out for it, and you ask for it. The, if thou seekest her, those things as silver, and searchest for her as for her treasure, like you watch these guys who go up in Alaska and have these things where they're looking for gold, well, with that kind of attitude, yeah. and that kind of expense, that kind of time. Well, look for it as for silver, and search for it as for hid treasure. You know, then you know what the result will be? Look at verse 5. Then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and do what? And find the knowledge of God. Yeah. Does he think that's worth anything? Like, oh, it was a big deal. Find the knowledge of God. Not the knowledge of Muhammad or Buddha or some false religion. The, the knowledge of God. Yeah. The knowledge of God. The one that, that, put, that hangs, that puts the moon up there and the sun up there and made your body and all these cells and keeps everything going. The knowledge of God. But see, the thing is, if, if, you, if you don't delight in God's word and it's reproaching to you, you're not going to do this, and so you're not going to find the knowledge of God. So this is what it takes. You've got to desire it. You can't be half-hearted. God ain't going to show you if you're half-hearted. If you don't really care about him, he's not going to reveal himself to you. But if you do, he will. And you say, wow, that's really good. Okay? And the devil will try to stop you. Uh, verse 7 says, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. A buckler is like a small little shield that you get personal with, with the enemy and you can push it back. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment, equity, yea, every good path. And that goes on with some other stuff. But here, there you can get the knowledge of God. And all these, you know, Buddhists and Catholic priests, you know, all these people, you know, they don't have the knowledge of God. But you can have the knowledge of God. Just a simple little person like you can have the knowledge of God. Amen. Right? It says right here. Isn't that pretty good? I thought that was real good. So uh, one thing's needful that you sit at the Lord's feet and hear his word. And it'll help you. It'll, it'll help you in the warfare. It'll help you in the work of God. It'll help you uh, warning against keeping away from sin. It'll help you the wiles of the devil. The devil's real. The devil will mess with your head. Amen. The devil will mess with your head, right? Like, he'll make me when I left the house a little, little bit late. I was kind of worried about getting here, you know, whether I'd be here in time, whatever. Well, devil, devil, the devil is a liar. Yeah, man. He'll use a little bit of truth, and he'll put a, bunch of, put a bunch of lies in there, and he'll get you all stressed out. Amen, right. That's why the Bible tells you to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring out to captivity every thought to the obedience to Christ, right? So grab that thought and say, look at this thought. This thought doesn't agree with the Bible. Let's cast this thing down. And then when you do that, then you'll be all in all readiness to obey the Lord. Yes. And it's like the ready, like reedy, readiness, readiness, like you know, read. That's right. So uh, watch out for the wiles of the devil. The devil is always on the job. He's never on vacation. Amen. He's never tired of messing everybody up. He's always willing and, and able to do it. And remember, the Lord wishes you, to, you and him to have fellowship. That's why I made you. He wants the sinner down there to have fellowship with him, so he wants you to get that person saved, and you can have, they can have fellowship with God, and then they can have fellowship with him, and one day we'll be up together and we'll see him like it is, you know? Amen, bro. Okay? And then God will give you wisdom and understanding in that fellowship, and uh, it'll give you good testimony, right? And the result of doing this, you'll be sad and disappointed, and you won't like the Lord. No, you'll be happy, right? <laughs> right? Have you met anybody who dedicated himself to the Lord who really sold out to God that was really depressed and unhappy and, and, uh, and was, was sorry he did that? Nope. Right. No. When I'm at work, sometimes I listen to the Bible at work, and I kind of want to share with some people, but I'm like in a different twilight zone there, you know? And you try to share with them things, but they don't have any comprehension of what you listen to or what you're, where you're at, and it's like, it's almost like, you're in, you're in one, one world and they're in a different world, it's like, you know, they, they can't relate to you, and you can't relate to them. Or you know what they're going through, but they're just, they're blind and can't see and dead, whatever. And, you know, it's like, it's really a shame. It's, and so you've got to pray that, that God will give you an open door. You can talk to some of these folks, you know. This Bible and Christianity is the, be, the, the best things I've ever come across. What, what would you be without the Bible? You think, well, I'll just be fine. Well, then you've got a problem. Yeah. You just think you'd be fine. Without the Lord, what would you be? Well, the thing is, people th think that they'll live for the world and for themselves, and they'll be happy. They won't. Right. You know, you'll just be, you'll just be uh, dissatisfied. This is the bread right here that God gave us, right? And what's happening with the world, the world's messed with God's bread. 
So God messed with their bread. See, back in about 1900, the, uh, uh, they took that flour and they, they messed with it. They made it GMO so it's more resistant. I think it's a conspiracy to make everybody sick. And it's just, you know, it's the devil, whatever. And uh, they, they, they messed with the word of God. And they messed with the bread. So God messed with, yeah. with man's word, right? Yeah. And, and, and now when you get the word, what happens is that, that GMO, that, that, uh, that bread that's got all the gluten in it, you can't digest. Think about this. If you have a Bible that you can't believe, can you digest it and can it help you? No. So if you eat that wonder bread or eat that whatever stuff that has all this gluten that your body can't break those uh, bonds of protein down, you, you can't absorb it. And if you can't absorb it, it's going to do you any good? No. So what it does, it, it gets in your colon and makes it all, it, it, all it, it, it messes up your colon so your colon can't absorb other nutrition and it just ruins your health. Yeah. So people with other Bibles, you know what it does? It ruins their spiritual health. And, and see, the thing is, they say your stomach is your second mind. They say a lot of times kids have problems with, in, with uh, Alzheimer's because it's connected with their stomach. Because they can't absorb nutrition, so it causes their mind to be messed up. So if you can't absorb the Word of God into your, into your, into your body and think right, you're messed up, right? But see, since we can absorb this, this is, uh, this is that fresh bread. Yeah. This is uh, uh, pure, you know, it's, it's good. And we can, we can believe this, but the thing is, if you can't believe the other bread... You can't benefit by it, right? And that's what's, that's what's out there in the world. They can't benefit by it. And you know all the people that use other versions? You, uh, you talk to them, have, have them give you a couple of Bible verses. Have them give you one. If they give you one by accident, you can have them give them two, maybe. They can't do it. Because they don't read it. Because it's, it, it's, it's not full of life, right? right. It's all messed up. And, and the, the God is not going to honor it and not going to bless it the way he does this right here, see? Amen. Because he'd be deceitful if he did, right? right? See, if you have something that's authorized, how about something that's not authorized? What do you call that? Mm. Yeah. So his other Bibles are what? Unauthorized. <laughs> unauthorized. So, 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 so if you get something in the store that comes in on a, a load of groceries or whatever, and we get something in and you take a gun and you scan it, it says, that's not unauthorized. You know what we do? We get rid of it. We don't, we don't keep it because it's unauthorized. We can't sell it. See, this is authorized. The other stuff is unauthorized. Amen. And remember, when Jesus spoke, how did he speak? Authority. Authority. It just kind of matches authorized, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for being good this time. Suppose at night when you close your eyes You take your final breath All the years you spent here on earth Not a minute would you have left Did you ever ask the Lord to save you Ever get down on your knees and pray Do you know what you're gonna hear when you face him on judgment day Will he say enter in my good and faithful one Or will he say depart from me I never knew you and the wicked things you've done Will you enter heaven's gates or hell fire down below the final time